Ladies and centers, welcome to another Tuesday evening edition of the Sin City Sports Show presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. It'll be a short edition today. Sorry, folks. Apologies. Getting done with coaches' meetings. I happen to have a, a head coach that can't meet until after a certain time. And usually it's 8 p.m. after he puts his kids to sleep. But regardless, we're here, shortened schedule. Also had a you know friend get home from a long vacation. It was good to speak with him a little bit. Uh, but regardless, we're here, man. We're doing our regular Tuesday thing. We only got a half-hour show. We might stretch on a little bit depending on what kind of a rant or tirade I go on with the Raiders. Um, but we'll try and keep it as close to a half-hour as possible. This is the Sin City Sports Show presented by IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Kale Henderson. You guys can get at us on our Twitter forums, at Sin City underscore I-E-S-R, at Kale underscore, at Kale underscore Henderson where we talk all things Vegas sports. Uh, good to see Taryn and Adam join the show. As always, they're, they're badasses. They're great teammates. Adam, hockey's heating up, man. Hockey's heating up. It's interesting that you joined when you did, too. Because we're going to talk a little Vegas Golden Knights. Tan Rodriguez says, tough weekend for the Vegas Thrill. Getting swept by San Diego Mojo. But they're still having a solid season. Yeah, not bad. Is it, uh, the Thrill is it's the Thrill's first season. Right, Taryn? The inaugural? I think it's the Thrill's first season. I could be wrong, but I think I remember that's what you told me. And I tend to believe what you tell me because you're the man, the myth, the legend. A lot going on in Vegas. Golden Knights are currently tied 4-4 with the uh, Nashville Predators in Nashville, I believe. Yep, it is in Nashville. That is a hell of a... That, that's a great matchup, dude. Uh, Adam says, yeah, Golden Knights are down to the bottom of the wild card seed. You nervous at all? Not really. It seems like they're getting hot at the right time. I mean, they've won four of the last five games. Um, even if they tie this game, it's a point. It looks like things are kind of getting tight between two, three, and four uh, because they're all within three points of each other in that uh, Pacific division. So uh, you, we, we've talked about it for a couple weeks with the Golden Knights. Um, it's one of those things where I, I've said, I've said well, there's 15 games left. And I've said numerous times the last few weeks, if the Golden Knights win four out of five, we'll just split into the thirds. If the Golden Knights win four out of five, win 12 out of the remaining 15 games, they'll be in the playoffs. Like whether it's a wild card, third seed, second seed, they'll be in the playoffs. The Knights happen to, to go on runs every single year. Sometimes when it matters most. Last year, it was just kind of a free ride. It felt like they were just dominating everybody. Um, this year, it's obviously going to be more of a fight. Aiden Hill being injured sucks. Like... If I'm nervous about anything, it's it's the goaltending situation because Aiden Hill has just been absolute money the last year and a half, um, almost the last two seasons, basically. So that's a tough loss, Adam. But the Golden Knights are a veteran team. Uh, they're filled with scores. And there's really no reason why they can't – I don't know. There's really no reason why they can't go on a run. The only thing that would make me nervous is when you get in the playoffs, goaltending matters. It's probably the most important thing. Aiden Hill is a perfect example of that. I think the first series he allowed maybe three goals total in four games. The second series, I want to say, was four goals total. And then in the, in the Stanley Cup final, like I think he allowed six or seven goals, but they won 5-1. Sorry, they won 4-1 as far as the series went. So, I, yeah. I don't know. A lot to think about. Um, four out of five. They win tonight. That puts them in a really good position. That that puts them in a tie tiebreaker or not a tiebreaker, it puts them in, they're tied for third place if they win tonight. And then, you know, uh, the Kings are a really good team, but it's been kind of a crapshoot lately. Uh, what I would say is this, the Kings and the Knights are both on a win streak. Knights are on a three-game win streak, Kings are on a four-game win streak. Uh, Knights win tonight, four-game win streak. So it's interesting, those, those two teams, three and four, are absolutely going on a run, while the two top teams are... On a loss are on a losing streak right now. Uh, I think it is Vancouver's on a two-game losing streak, while the Oilers are on a two-game losing streak as well. So, I mean, and Oilers are at 88 points, the Knights are at 85. There's still 10 games left. Uh, sorry, 11 games left in this in this season. A lot could happen, man. A lot could happen with when you're when you're uh, when three through four in your Pacific, in your division 
are separated by three points. Anything could happen those last that, those last week that last week and a half or two weeks. Anything could happen. Ralph chimes in. Good evening, Kale. The best sports show in Vegas. Nice of you to say that, Ralph. Man, uh, host of the Inza Report. Adam Karnick is the host of the Neutral Zone, which was on just before us. Uh, host I formerly or a show I formerly hosted, but he obviously does a much better job with Zach. Um, Taryn, man, myth the legend. The guys, the guy runs like everything. I Sports Radio. He's he's a leader. Um, he's a man among boys. Just kidding, but seriously, uh, has multiple shows. He has Set Point, uh, our resident volleyball show. On top of that, he is the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. I, I, that's probably my favorite. Well, that's the one I go back and listen to all the time uh, because I really like to keep up with the L.A. sports. L.A. is just the mecca of sports, man. I mean, New York is – technically New York is, but L.A., man. When when L.A. has great sports, I don't know if, if leagues are in a better position. And the Rams, yeah, the Rams and the uh, Chargers – they're both going to be on the uptick real soon here. I do like where the Rams are at. I, I I don't like that they lost Aaron Donald. There's a possibility that the Rams could be losing Stafford in the same offseason. Like the guy is contemplating ret- retirement. His wife has straight up come out on a talk show and said he's been looking at retirement. That would be that would absolutely suck for the Rams. But I mean, you know, if Stafford stays, you still have a contender, man. Uh, but the Rams got to find a couple guys, depth pieces to replace Aaron Donald because he's just he's just way too damn good. Tanner says only 10 more episodes till episode 100. Yeah, can you believe it? Can you believe the Sin City Sports Show is almost at 100 episodes already? That's crazy, man. I just can't I can't believe how how quickly that's gone on. Shout out to our sponsors real quick. Planet Jerky Premium Beef Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League Champion Lake Elsinore Storm Single A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all brisket jerky has gluten-free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, low in sugar, and high in protein. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other level. You guys can check out Planet Jerky on Instagram, at Planet Jerky. Uh, You have Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B., You just finished your very own wedding or baby shower invitations. You're looking for that extra special touch. Maybe you just wrote a letter to a relative or a friend and you want to add to their smile when they receive it. Then seal the deal Cecilia's handmade sealing wax stamps for your invitations, letters, and gifts. You bring the deal, we'll seal the deal. Check that business out, that sponsor out on Instagram, at seal the deal underscore wax stamps, at Facebook, the Facebook, seal the deal wax seals. And for our Platinum, IE Sports Radio, for the last nine years, IE Sports Radio has brought you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Make sure to follow us at IESportsRadio.com or at, at IE Sports Radio on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to keep up with the latest sports with all of our shows. Also... Check out our daily updated website, iesportsradio.com, for sports news, the fans of the month, pages dedicated to each podcast, our IE Sports Radio community forum, and stop by and check out our merch. Stop by the store and check out our merch. Thank you for making IE Sports Radio your direct feed for all that is sports. If you guys miss an episode, don't even worry about that. You want to know why? Because we're an Apple podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, CastBox, Deezer, uh, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Geosvan. I always mess that one up. I don't care what anybody says. It's Geos. It's got to be. I don't know. Can one of you guys give me an idea of how to pronounce that? Geosvan. I'm just gonna say it like that. I'm gonna say it all goofy until someone says something different. We're on YouTube, and as always, you guys could revisit any of our episodes on our IE Sports Radio personal page on the IE Sports Radio rep website. Golden Knights. Oh, they just lost tonight. But you know what is an OT? Which is good. That's a point. Okay? So you got 72 games done. You're one game back from third place. Um, you were on a streak. Again, winning, winning. what was it? One, two, three, four out of the last five games. Now it's time to go another run. Win another four straight. Winnipeg's not going to be easy, but it's a winnable game. Uh, Minnesota's not going to be easy, but winnable game on Saturday. Uh, a lot of things can happen, man. So, Adam, when you tell me, am I nervous? The only thing I'm nervous about is Aiden Hill because he's been an unbelievable goalie for the Golden Knights for the last couple of years. What I would say is this. 
if any team can kind of figure it out, it's them. They know when to score. They know how to score. They know how to play urgent hockey. They always play with urgency towards the end of the season. They're a playoff caliber team every single year. They really have been. Brutal loss for VGK. Uh, Knights were up 4-1 and 3-0 tonight. Yeah, again, losing Aiden Hill kills. It sucks. Um, last year, if the Vegas Golden Knights were up 4-1 to start, start the deal, Aiden Hill didn't have to worry about it. Like You didn't have to worry about it as a fan. Now you have a backup goalie, a guy who struggled most of the season. I think it's Thompson, uh, a guy who struggled most of the season in goal, and, and that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough when you play really good teams. Nashville happens to be a pretty good team. That is horrible. Uh, but the overtime victory is a point, and that helps. Now you get a day of rest, then you play Winnipeg on Thursday. Day of rest, play Minnesota on, on Saturday. Finish out the week with two more wins, man. Finish out the week with two more wins. That'd be huge. If they score a point in every game moving forward, they're going to be the wild card seed at least. But I'd like to see them win, I don't know, eight more games if they can. If they win eight more games, they're guaranteed third or second or third seed. Because I think they'll pass up the gold or pass up the Kings. But that's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough when you don't have your starting goalie, man. The guy you, you invested some money in in the offseason, if he's not available for your team, how, it, it gets rough. It gets tough. It's really hard to do that. Because in, in the playoffs, it's about defense for the NHL. In the playoffs, it's all about how can they keep pucks out of the goal. Yeah, scoring's great, but scoring doesn't happen in bunches in the playoffs. Last year was an anomaly. Last year, teams were just putting up points. It was crazy. There were some lopsided victories. Uh, but traditionally, in the NHL, it's all about defense, goaltending, and uh, taking advantage of power plays. Hockey at its finest, right? <clears throat> so it looks like so some Raiders news. Let's, let's top over the Raiders. Oh, by the way. Uh, that, that OT point is huge. Six-point cushion uh, between them and the Blues. Mission accomplished. Yeah, them and the Blues. Oh, got you. Got you for the wild card spot. Got you. Totally get what you're saying now. My bad, man. I get what you're saying. Um, Raiders news. So the NFL, uh, it looks as though you know Tom Brady is going to have, he's going to purchase a portion of the Raiders. And... There's been some backlash. There's been some positive news about that. Here, here's the reality. Mark Davis doesn't have kids. I don't know why. I can't tell you why. That's none of my business. But Mark Davis doesn't have kids. There, there's nobody to just take over the Raiders if Mark Davis were to pass on within the last next couple of years. I think Mark Davis is like in his early 60s. So that shouldn't be a threat. Uh, but But reality is like, he needs someone to take over when he's gone. And, and Tom Brady's a perfect choice, man. And what a business decision that would be for Tom Brady. The guy would be rich for years to come. Richer for years to come. And I think you'd have a competent organization. You'd have a guy that comes in and says, hey, this is how you win games. We will accept nothing less but this. We will accept nothing less but this. You can't tell me that Tom Brady won't have like a John Lynch effect. Will he be the final say on roster decisions? Absolutely not. That's Telesco. That's AP. But if Tom Brady becomes a partial owner, you cannot tell me he won't have big-time influence on what happens in the football operations moving forward. You can't look at a seven-time Super Bowl champion and not know how to build a team. Look what he did in Tampa Bay. The dude showed up, and he was just pointing at guys in free agency and said, you bring this guy here, we'll win a championship. And, he's, and he was true to his word. So... And, he, and here's the thing, man. I'm a big Raiders fan. Everybody knows that. The tuck rule was real, man. It, it kicked us in the nuts. The tuck rule was horrible. Absolutely awful, man. The tuck, tuck rule was terrible. But as I've gotten older, as Tom Brady got older, as Tom Brady really got into his prime years or his, his, his latter years of his football career, you gained a ton of respect for him because he's done everything the right way. You could say all you want about the inflated balls. None of that was proved. Okay? I don't care. At that point, they just kind of had a a stricken record, and uh, uh, the NFL was kind of gunning for them because they had a pass with the 
with the uh, spy gate and everything else. I don't know if the deflate gate thing was real. Tom Brady's kind of a big dude. He's skinny, but he's 6'4". He had huge hands. I don't really think he needed more grip on the ball. I think he was fine. But regardless, Tom has a winning mentality, and he knows the game of football really well, and he's studied under the greatest head coach we've ever seen, under one of the better offensive coordinators, multiple offensive coordinators, Charlie Weiss being the first one, right? Excellent offensive mind. And then he moved to Josh McDaniels. Excellent offensive mind. He he was a quarterback that benefited from the great coaching of, of uh, Skarnecchia, one of the best O-line coaches we've ever seen. Dante Skarnecchia was no joke, man. He was one of the best offensive line coaches ever, period. Tom Brady's got a ton of wisdom, dude. ton of wisdom. So if he can come in and he can share ways to win games, you take it. Yes, let him be part owner. Because everything Tom Brady does, he does at 100%. And if he's going to be a part owner, he's going to be a part owner at 100%. I promise you, when he's had these meetings with Mark Davis, it's been honest. Like, Thomas said, hey, if you're going to bring me on, I need to ha- I need to know what's going on. I need to have a say. Do you see Brady as being a regular presence as a minority owner or more of a silent type? Regular presence. Why? If, if you're Mark Davis, you have a track record of, of not knowing what the hell you're doing. Like, let's let's be honest here, dude. The guy's been the owner for 12 years since his dad passed. And we're on our sixth head coach. You've had a head coach almost every other year. You've had two playoff wins. Sorry, you've had two playoff appearances, no playoff wins in 12 years as an owner. You're failing the franchise. You're failing your fan base. So there's no way, and I think Mark is fully admit, he has no effing clue about the game of football. Right, he's grew he grew up around it, but he doesn't have the, the the mind like a lot of other owners do to make football decisions. Right now, what Mark needs to do is focus on business, and he needs to bring somebody in with interest that is really going to help win football games. It can't just be Tom Telesco. It can't just be AP. There's got to be someone above him, above them that gets it done. And and, you know, if, if I'm the Raiders and, and you can get this going, he isn't just the minority owner. I'm making him like vice president of football ops. Because you want Tom Brady, a, a seven-time Super Bowl champ, and, and first ballot Hall of Famer, probably the greatest quarterback to ever play the game, winningest, I should say. You want him with, with you know, you want him giving advice and input. So I don't see him being silent. There's no way. That's not a Tom Brady way. I don't think he's silent at all. I don't think he does this without knowing he's going to have a say in things. And I think Mark doesn't allow this to keep going if he doesn't understand what he's doing with the Tom Brady situation. I like it. I think it's great. Um, Antonio Pierce, people are kind of being a, bit, being a bit judgmental with him in the way he's talked to the media. I think he's being real about the situation. That's one thing I don't have to worry about with AP. AP is going to be real with the media. And it's in regards to, to, to uh, Aiden O'Connell. He's carefully said that they're going to do everything they can to improve every position. Whether that's trading up for for their guy at number three and mortgaging the future or future ones to get your guy, Jaden Daniels, because it is well known that he loves Jaden. Jaden played for him at Arizona State, right? He has a relationship with those guys, uh, Antonio Pierce and Marvin Lewis, who were both at Arizona State when Jaden was a quarterback there. It's no secret that's who they'd want to that's who they'd want to draft. If I'm being real with you guys right now, with with the talk that we've been hearing from Drake May, because he's soured on quite a few scouts, Drake May is still going to be a top ten player, but there's a possibility he doesn't get he doesn't get picked in the top four or five, and if he does, it's because the team is so nervous about losing the opportunity to get a a high end talent like Drake May, who has a high ceiling. Man, like I've said this for m- months, I think Drake May has the highest potential. The greatest potential out of all the quarterbacks. He's 6'4". He's sneaky athletic. He's got a great arm. What's hurt him is he's he's played in an air raid college system with no defense. His offensive line was practically brand new last year, and he lost majority of his receivers to the NFL draft. Drake May had a down year last year. That's fine. The tools say he's going to be a good quarterback. He just needs to end up in the right position. Um, 
So if he fell and the Raiders just kind of traded up to six or seven to pick up Drake, I'd be great with it. But I think what AP is trying to set is expectations that in, when AP took over, he took over a tumultuous situation. Like Josh McDaniels was not a leader of men. He lost the locker room. Um, you had you had players leaking information from meetings and shit like that because they were so sick of him. And when he was gone, AP had to come in and reestablish a culture. One of the guys he, he needed to do that, one of the guys he needed to do that was Aiden O'Connell. And Aiden O'Connell, a rookie, fourth-round rookie out of Purdue, stepped up. He went 5-5 five and five as a starter for the Raiders. He outplayed Justin Herbert in that first meeting. And if it wasn't for some archaic, horrible play calling by, by our um, head coach at the time and, and offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, I think we win that football game. I really do because Aiden was playing really, really well. He's got a he's got a great arm. I don't understand this this talk about uh, he just he just doesn't have this. No, he doesn't have a howitzer like Patrick Mahomes. Like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen have have rare arms, man, rare arm talents. So no, you're not going to put him in the same light. But he was making some throws last year with a lot of zip, 25, 35 yards on a line last year, and they had to be accurate because the offense that they ran. Under Josh McDaniels, there wasn't a lot of room for error. You're either wide open or you're covered, and and you're 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 open if you have a step. And that in the NFL, that's what's different. In the NFL, if you have a step on your corner, you're open. Whereas in college and high school, you're open if there's if there's a few yards of grass in between you and the defender. That you just don't find that in the NFL. So I think Aiden O'Connell did an excellent job. I've said this for months, man. I think Aiden O'Connell's a possibility. Do I believe the Raiders should try to trade up? Yes. If they find that it is way too pricey to do that, then it's fine. You stay at 13. You take best available. If I'm the Raiders, I come. I, I just amass more picks. Seriously. If you can trade back and get a second, so if you can trade back, what, 10 spots, go to 23. You're still in a great position to get an excellent player because there's 50 players that could be first round grades in this year's NFL draft. So you're still going to get an excellent player. You have a roster that's built pretty well. I mean, let's let's look at this, man, and I'm going to be going over a little bit, forgive me guys, but it is what it is. We're going on a tangent. Let's look at this roster. The defensive line is stacked now. Adding Christian Wilkins with, you know, John Jenkins who was already there at nose tackle, uh, with a Tyree Wilson which is growing. Um, apparently he's put on about 5 to 10 pounds of muscle. And he looks lean. He looks strong. I've seen him on a couple of the podcasts. Max Crosby's podcast, The Rush, to be exact. Malcolm Kuntz had eight sacks to end the season last year. He's got faster. He's gotten stronger. Um, he's getting a ton of love. So you have a three-way rotation with Tyree Wilson, with, with Malcolm Kuntz, and the great Mac, Max Crosby, right? On top of that, your defensive line has two really, really good, solid players. Uh, they brought back Butler as well. So I think they'll have some depth. What they need to do is address depth and get starting caliber rotational talent in the draft, which you could do late in the first. You could do in the second round because they're all over this draft, man. Interior defensive linemen, defensive tackles are a are a dime a dozen this draft. Starting caliber guys, you will find everywhere in this draft. So I like this draft for the defensive line. I love this draft for the offensive line, especially tackles. Like, if we're serious about filling our tackle need at right tackle, this is the draft to do it. So, yeah, defensive line, great. It's going to be one of the better defensive lines in the in, in the league. Linebackers, you could probably add one or two guys. But reality is Spillane and, and Divine Diablo played really well last year. They were excellent. Excellent run defense. Um, they rushed the passer well when they were asked to do it. Your, your DBs, they're underrated. You don't have a big-name DB in this in, on this roster, but they all held out, and they helped contribute to the number one defense the last half of the football season last year. And you're going to probably add to it because there's going to be some bargain bin uh, additions as we move on. And remember, folks, the Raiders are going to have $28 million show up in their cap space June 1st because of the Garoppolo cut. There's going to be moves made before the, uh, and, and they showed it last year, by the way, after Antonio Pierce took over, 
uh, he and and uh, the assistant general manager at the time. I don't know why I'm blanking all of a sudden. I'm, I apologize for that. But he and the assistant general manager made moves. They brought in Jack Jones, who ended up being amazing for them. I just think, in general, defensively, you're in a good spot. Now it's time to add depth. Add depth. Use those draft picks. If you trade back from 13 to 22 or 13 to 23, about 10 spots, you're probably going to get a second and a fourth or a second and a fifth, in addition to maybe a future pick, maybe a future third or something like that, which would go hand in hand with what you're trying to do as, as a club. Build around Aiden O'Connell if you can't trade up because he's a good player. Your offensive line, center through left tackle, you had a top 10 offensive line. It was the right guard in Van Ruten who actually played really well. The right tackle, which almost crippled the offense at times. Say what you want about Illuminor. He didn't allow a ton of sacks, but he wasn't great. You need to bring in competition with Thayer Mumford. So what I think the Raiders need to do is really focus on finding a guy that they can bring in that would either be a starting right tackle or starting right guard, day one. And that could happen late in the first and in the second, especially if you have multiple second-round draft picks. There's a ton of depth in this draft, dude. Our wide, rec- our wide receiver core is very good. I think you have a three, you have a three-headed monster in Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Trey Tucker. You should probably add to that, you know? Getting a, a Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. He is one of the better route runners in this entire draft. He's almost uncoverable off the line of scrimmage, and he's super fast. He'd be perfect in the slot. What's his name? Aeneas Williams, I think it is, out of Texas A&M. He's more of a stockier, shorter, you know, 5'10", 200-pound, or sorry, he's a 195-pound slot receiver who's, again, rated as one of the best route runners in this draft, and he ran a 4'3" which was faster than what Donna Renfro could do. Let's just be honest, man. There's guys all over this draft. The Raiders just have to be smart about it. The next thing, I think they need to prioritize a running back in the third or fourth round. Yes, you have Zeus. I like Zeus a lot. He's a bell cow. He's a thick guy with a lot of burst. But a Jalen Wright out of Tennessee would be fantastic as a backup, as a rotational starter, in case something happened. Jalen Wright out of Tennessee averaged seven yards a carry last year for the Tennessee Volunteers. He was like 5.8 yards a carry the year before. And he is a downhill runner because that Tennessee offense is built on the vertical pass game and the vertical run game. I know because I was at a a coach's clinic in Mississippi where Josh Heupel talked about his offense. And he showed nothing but highlights of Jalen Wright because he's an absolute stud. Unbelievable player. In the backfield, out of the backfield, between the tackles. Unbelievable player. I would totally go after him. That Estime kid out of Notre Dame. Big, thick, physical runner, man. He he can find space. Excellent guy. He could pick in the fourth or fifth round. He he fits this this Antonio Pierce mold where we're going downhill, man, and we're punishing you. Texas Tech has a very talented running back who who is in an air raid offense, so he's used to catching the ball when he needs to catch the ball. There's a lot to like about this draft, and I think the Raiders can really make some impact guys. The problem is, I feel like they can't miss, because the Chiefs haven't been missing on their draft picks. Look at their roster, dude. Their defense is full of second- and third-year players. And it was one of the better defenses in the league last year, the best defense Patrick Mahomes has had. The Raiders can't afford to miss picks. They can't afford to do what they've been doing the last 20 years. No way. Absolutely not. Jen, thank you so much for for tuning in. She's part of our Cleveland show. She is the Cleveland show. She's got to be having a ton of fun, too. I think Cleveland's building a monster, and Kevin Stefanski, to me, is one of the best head coaches in all of football right now. Stefanski's done more with less than almost any other franchise that's playoff-bound on a yearly basis or consistently. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Stefanski's a beast. I did like the uh, Amari Cooper. You know, I like that they kept him. Um, I like that, the, that he, they brought in his counterpart from, from Alabama. You have two Alabama receivers. I don't know if that – I like the extension, but still. I think, I think the Browns are going to be loaded, dude. Like, they're going to be a very good football team. That AFC North is going to be crazy. But back to the Raiders, back to the draft, I, 
straight up, I think Telesco needs to trade back. If he can, mid to late 20s. Get your best available guy at your, at your biggest need. Or just best available. And then fill your needs later. Um, even if it's a pass rusher, dude. Like, if Latu is available at 20, 25, take him. He's going to be one of the better pure pass rushers in this draft. If Byron Murphy's available in the 20s, take him. If J.C. Latham or uh, Darius Mims out of Georgia, that massive 6'7", 340-pound athletic freak out of Georgia is available, take him. He's a perfect fit to for, for what Antonio Pierce and them want to do. And he's Trent Brown-like. Like, he's just... He's, he, he's far more athletic. Like, for a 340-pound guy, he's lean, dude. Lean and athletic. If Mims is available in the 20s, take him. Invest in your future. If you bring in, if you bring in Mims, Mumford could easily play guard because he did it in, at Ohio State. He played left guard at Ohio State. The year before, he was a first-round grade at, at left tackle. Mumford could be an absolute versatile freak. And then you don't have to go spend big money on a right guard. You can just you can just draft for depth. There's just so much the Raiders can do. And I highly encourage, if they can't get a great deal, to go up and get their guy in the top five. Build around Aiden. Because Aiden played really well. He went five and five. When Antonio Pierce took over, he was five and four. His last four games of the season, he threw eight touchdowns and zero interceptions. He was the second best rookie quarterback last year behind only C.J. Stroud, who had an unbelievable year, like one of the greatest rookie years we've ever seen. Aiden's not getting enough credit, and I like that Antonio Pierce is saying it's got to go through him. If we bring in a quarterback, they got to beat him out because he's earned it, and he, he works hard. Antonio said it straight up. Aiden is killing it this offseason. He's putting in the work. He's working out hard. He's putting in the study time with Getze like he should. He is preparing himself as if he's the starter. He's doing all the right things. And yes, he's not a mobile quarterback. I get it. But I don't think you need that in this offense. I think this offense is going to be very good in the run game. I think play action is going to be wide open. It's going to be a lot like that Packers offense that we saw with Matt LaFleur. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon were absolutely toting the rock. And all, all Aaron Rodgers had to do is distribute the ball really well when he needed to. Off play action. Straight up, dude. It's that simple. Taryn chimes in. The Vegas Thrill are actually playing the Grand uh, Rapid Rise right now and are tied 1-1 through two sets. It's awesome, man. It's best two out of three, right, when it comes to sets in volleyball? Excuse my ignorance. I like what the Raiders have going for them, man. They're the number 13 overall pick. If they decide not to trade back um, and they decide to use, you know, their seven draft picks where they're at, fine. No problem. The other thing I like about trading back is if you trade back and you amass more picks, right? Let's say, let's say you trade back, you get a second and a fifth this year and maybe a second next year for trading back like eight to ten spots. Okay. Well, you'll have like three or four fifth-round picks. Take a couple of them, pair them together, and move up into the third round. Get two first-round picks. Or, sorry, get a first-round pick, multiple second-round picks, multiple third-round picks. You could really change your team overnight in one offseason by landing those five picks. Because that's five really good players that you could bring on this football team. It isn't all about just... Picking best available. Sometimes you have to play chess when everybody else is playing checkers. Trading back, amassing picks, and then trading back up. If as long as the Raiders make 7 to 10 picks, we're good. If they trade away a couple picks and only pick 7, but they've traded in those top 3 rounds to get guys that they really want and will fit the mold that the Raiders are trying to build, a physical, fundamental uh, bully... In the AFC, which is what they're going to have to do if they really want to compete against Kansas City and, and the Baltimores and stuff like that. Trade back in the first, amass some picks, trade back up in the third round on day three. On day two. Sorry, day two. Trade back into the third. Trade back into the second for F's sake. 
The Raiders have plenty of cap space. You're going to be able to afford three second round picks if you have them. How do you think Baltimore got so good, man? They traded away players. They basically went bargain bin shopping. They drafted the majority of their current roster. Their center, which everyone kind of frowned upon because they wanted they wanted uh, to pick a, the fans and everybody all around said, get Lamar Jackson weapons. Dude, that center is one of the best centers in the league already. No joke. That center is one of the best centers in the league already. They had like four fourth round picks that year. Every single one of them are still on the team. If you land picks, man, it changes your roster. And it makes things more affordable for you long term. So that way you can pay really good players to come in while you have a ton of contributing rookie rookie uh, first contracts. That's how winning teams do it. They draft well. They pay stars for a three to four year period. And then if they can, they take their homegrown talent and they either trade them away for assets or they extend them. And then it's the cycle is all over again. Continue to draft well. If you get complacent, that's the problem. Unfortunately, the Raiders have been complacent for almost 20 years when it comes to drafting. I don't think we've had a grade better than B in like a decade. That's got to change this year, man. And Telesco has a habit of finding talent. That Chargers team is talented. That coach was just a dumbass. Not much you can do about that. It is what it is, man. Like I said, as a quick show, we went about 45 minutes this this round. I was able to stay on a little late because no other no other person uh, talks sports after me on Tuesday. So this is kind of nice. If I ever have to start late, I could always go late if need be. I try to respect the times because it is the times. It's, it's what Larry and them kind of pay for. But regardless, uh, great show tonight. I'm actually really happy with the show tonight, man. I think we uh, touched base on a lot of really good things. Vegas is killing it. Conor McGregor still not has not announced his fight. He's just saying he's going to fight in the summer excited for that roadhouse wasn't bad if you guys get a chance watch it dune 2 was epic i saw it twice great movie great movie one of the better sci-fi movies we've seen in years uh that was a blast this is the sin city sports show presented by IE sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports i'm your host kale henderson you guys get at me on our twitter forums at sin city underscore iesr at Kale underscore Henderson, where we talk all things Vegas sports. If you guys miss a show, don't even worry about it, man. We're on almost every major forum. Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Pods, Amazon Music, CastBox, YouTube. Go to our website, iesportsradio.com. Search Sin City Sports. You guys can check out our past episodes there. As always, folks, we love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we talk all things Vegas sports. Love, peace, and hair grease, folks.